All right, let's get into completing the square. Now, a lot of times teachers will go right into the algorithmic method for completing the squares, and guess what? It gets confusing. Why are we doing this? How do we do it when the numbers are not as nice as what the teacher just taught? It's a lot of times, there's a lot of frustration that comes along with completing the square. It's probably one of the reasons why it's one of my most requested video topics on my channel. So in this video, I just wanna go over the basics of what you need to understand as well as know, so therefore you can complete the square like a pro. I am going to be dealing with some basic problems, but I have tons of other videos that I'll mention at the end of this video where you can go and work on some more advanced examples. So the main thing that we want to know about completing the square is why exactly we are doing it or what are we trying to achieve. See, this is an example of standard form for a quadratic. This is an example of vertex form. Now, don't worry about the H and the K. You can see the A is still the same, what happened to the B and C. Those just all represent numbers. Don't get stuck into the weeds. The main thing I want you to understand or see is this has what we call a binomial squared, whereas standard form does not. So it's important to make sure we understand what is a binomial squared. So just remember, a binomial squared is going to be a binomial multiplied by itself. So this is x plus one times a x plus one. Then applying FOIL or distributive property, we are going to achieve an x squared plus two x plus one. This is what we call a perfect squared trinomial. Now, when we are completing the square, we always want to create perfect squared trinomials. Why? Because perfect square trinomials can be factored down into binomial squares. That is what we're looking for, is creating a perfect square trinomial, so therefore we have a binomial square. So let's just kind of do a quick little practice. I'll keep the numbers the same, but what if I go ahead and change my middle term to a negative? Can you factor this down into a binomial square? Now, hopefully you recognize, well, the numbers are going to be the same. If this is x plus one squared, gives me x squared plus two x plus one, but now I need my middle two terms to be negative, then this is going to be an x minus one quantity squared. And that's really where I want students to start with when they're understanding completing the square. Know your perfect square trinomials. Know how to factor them down to binomial squared. So what I wanna do is just kind of go through a couple examples, showing you how to go ahead and do that, and then I will pivot into completing the square example so you can see how powerful this is. These are all perfect square trinomials. I already covered the one with x plus one and x minus one, right? So I did change up here, the middle terms being positive or negative, but hopefully you kind of recognize here from this first example that all it's gonna do is change the term in the binomial squared. So with these four examples, including this one, so five examples, you should know how to be able to factor these down quickly. And I'm telling you, if you have these down pat, it is going to help you out immensely when you're going to completing the square. So if I look at this, you can always think about this like in your factoring head, like what two numbers multiply to give me my last number, add to give me my middle term. But you should also recognize that these have the patterns of perfect square trinomials. So if I was going to factor this, this would be an x plus two, quantity squared. This one, what two numbers multiply to give me nine, add to give me a negative three, that's going to be an x minus three, quantity squared. This one here, you can see, is going to be an x squared plus five, quantity squared. And then this one is going to be, did I forget the four? I did forget the four. Oh, well, we'll, we'll do that for our example. And this one will be an x squared, or an x, sorry, minus six, quantity squared, right? And again, you can always go back and check your work to be able to see, you know, to make sure that those multiply out to give you that perfect square turnover, okay? So now let's go and take a look at an example and see why this would be so powerful. And actually, let me just do the last example here. So let's do x squared plus eight x plus 16. That's going to be an x squared, or why do I keep on doing that? That's going to be an x plus four quantity squared. Okay, so if you know these and you can factor them down easily, right? You're very comfortable with them. Forget about all the hoopla with completing the square. You know this. Now you have a great leg up in understanding how to complete the square. Okay, so here's our example, right? So now what we need to do is complete the square. Now we understand that this is in standard form and we want to be able to put it into our vertex form. So what we know, the only way to be able to put this in vertex form is to create a perfect square trinomial that we can now factor down into a binomial squared. However, these are all our perfect square trinomials, right? So what we need to do is we recognize that this is not a perfect square trinomial, but you can see it's very similar to this one, right? So what I need to do is actually input this perfect square trinomial in here. You can see I have the x squared plus the eight x, right? So what I'm gonna do though, is I'm just gonna say, well, I want I need that to be a 16. That's the only way I can factor that down, right? Now again, you can't just randomly add a number to one side of an equation, right? So if I have the plus five, if I'm gonna add the 16 here, 
technically, then I also have to subtract the 16 as well, right? Again, we always gotta create our equations the same. But what I did is I imposed this perfect square trinomial. Now, for those of you that have an understanding of perfect square trinomials, and you don't, or you also have a term that is not going to be not even, let's say it's like five, or let's say it's nine. Remember, you can always find this term that completes the square by taking b divided by two and squaring it. Right? That is gonna be what we call our value C, which gives us this final term. So I am going off of these basic ones because again, a lot of these, once you're comfortable with this, you can actually do completing the square in your head, right? It's very, very helpful. But for those more advanced problems, the ones that are more, a little bit more difficult with numbers that might have fractions, then always relying on the B divided by two squared will give you that last term. Now here, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so comfortable with my perfect square trinomials, I know what the factor form is, x plus four quantity squared. So Y equals x plus four, quantity squared, and then five minus 16 is going to be 11. You can see now, ladies and gentlemen, I went from standard form all the way to vertex form. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, guys, this is very basic examples. This is exactly how I want my students to start with. But if you feel like you are comfortable with this and you want to go and now explore some more advanced options, then check out the next video I have right here.